Have you ever spaced out over a long and difficult book and realized that you perhaps haven't even read a single word in 10 minutes? Or started thinking about lunch when an overenthusiastic co-worker goes on a little too long in a meeting? Daydreaming when you're supposed to be studying for an important test? Nearly everyone zones out from time to time. It might happen more frequently when you feel bored or stressed or when you'd rather be doing something else. It's also pretty common to experience prolonged spaciness or this brain fog if you're dealing with grief, a painful breakup or anxiety or difficult life circumstances. In these cases, zoning out can serve as a coping tactic of sorts, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So this form of dissociation, which is stepping away from conscious association, is something we all do. It's a vital part of our ingrained survival system. It is a part of the system that helps us to cope with stressful situations, anxieties, which may otherwise feel too much, too overwhelming for the brain. It's a built-in mechanism. It's not pathological. However, sometimes when a trauma occurs, a very big event, or say someone's exposed to prolonged adverse situations in life, sometimes this built-in system disconnects to a greater degree in an effort to protect the individual from uh, traumatic material, body sensations, emotions, or memories that may be overwhelming. Dissociation and dissociative disorders can be understood by imagining a massive spectrum with varying degrees of how our brain chooses to dissociate or disconnect from something unpleasant. On the lower end of this dissociation spectrum, for example, um, let's say someone was in a car accident. A few days after the accident, the person finds that he or she cannot recall certain parts of the accident, even though reports of others were that he or she was conscious and responsive during those times, but that person cannot recall. On the other end of the spectrum, say someone who has been severely abused throughout life can dissociate to the point that he or she has more than one personality, all of whom display and contain their own distinct characteristics and who hold different memories associated with the trauma. Often, this is shown in an exaggerated and perhaps false form in the movies where a character changes voice and personality and has separate motives with no recollections and uh, then this character plots malicious behaviors. It makes for a great story, but the truth is this form of dissociative identity disorder or what used to be called multiple personality disorder is so rare, it's just less than 1% uh, of the world population. But let's understand this further. For the traumatized individual, dissociation may help him or her to survive circumstances that may have otherwise been intolerable. So dissociation can actually help a person feel as if situations, his or her body sensations, emotions that would have been overwhelming, etc. are now muted and distorted. So he or she can then go into autopilot mode and survive extreme situations and circumstances. When trauma is ongoing, dissociation can sometimes become fixed and automatic, which becomes an adaptive defense in response to high stress or that is typical trauma characterized by memory loss and a sense of disconnection from oneself or one's surroundings, one's reality. In brain science, dissociation is a term used to describe both a set of behaviors and experiences involving functional alterations of memory, perception and identity, as well as the psychophysiological processes that are presumed to underlie these phenomena. Dissociative experiences have typically been thought to exist on a continuum, like I said, ranging from everyday experience of, uh, say, a completely getting absorbed, like a highway hypnosis, uh, through more intense and prolonged forms of dissociative experiences, such as depersonalization, derealization, 
or very profound dissociative phenomena like amnesia or uh, dissociative amnesia and alteration in identity, like I said, dissociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder. Let's understand that around the world, all dissociative experiences take place in three main contexts. First, in response to acute stress and trauma. Second, in socially sanctioned rituals and healing practices that are associated with religious meaning systems or in artistic performances, they look like dissociative hysteria where they act possessed. Number three, it could be as spontaneous fluctuation in ordinary conscious experience that often go unrecognized and unmarked. But whatever dissociative or dissociation we are talking about, when we are looking at disorders, we are looking at five central symptoms. We are looking at amnesia, loss of memory for short or long periods of time. This can include not recalling all or part of an incident or time period. Second, depersonalization feeling detached from yourself, parts of your body and your emotions like you're on autopilot or robotic. Third, derealization, feeling detached from your surroundings and people who were once familiar, like the world around you isn't real right now. Four, identity confusion, feeling uncertainty, puzzlement or conflict about who you really are. Number five, identity alteration alterations in personality and behavior that others notice. Sometimes this manifests as feelings as if you don't have control over other personalities or your body. So you keep switching. Look, the goal in therapy is not to eliminate dissociation completely, but rather to help the brain and body to update to the current circumstances. Specifically, this would include helping a person to integrate current information about the circumstances in which they live. If no danger is existing, we help the brain and body to learn how to be safe, how to then, uh, you know, reduce the anxiety around safety. We work towards being able to maintain awareness of the present moment, body sensations, emotions and surroundings through mindfulness. It's one of the ways to uh, address dissociation, especially uh, before we start any trauma work. When we're working with dissociative uh, issues or concerns, it is a prolonged treatment which may involve medication as well as um, a lot of therapeutic interventions. But I'll tell you this, as a therapist, I appreciate dissociation as a valuable gift our brains are able to give us when we endure trauma. I emphasize to the people I work with in therapy that dissociation has helped them to survive. And we can acknowledge that this is a defense that has perhaps worked in the past for a really long time, but it's no longer needed. And I can, with them, uh, in association with them, make them feel safe and live in current reality. Take care.